So recently I was talking to a friend and this friend was telling me about their Mazda 3. Their Mazda 3 is like a 2007, 2008, about 170, 175,000 miles. And they were telling me it, it is a piece of Upon asking what makes it a piece of shit, they told me that as of right now, things are starting to go up. And so I naturally asked, well, what's been going wrong with it over the last 10, 11 years? They said, well, really nothing. Only the normal maintenance stuff. So that brings me to the new 2018 Mazda 3 five-door Grand Touring that I tested for a week. Most people that ask me about new cars, when I recommend Mazda, they go, yeah, but is it anything like a, a Honda or Toyota? The problem with that being is that I know for a fact that Honda and Toyota are currently chasing the reliability of Mazda. This has actually been told to me by someone that I know within the dealer network of Toyota. The car I had was $27,920. It was an exceptional vehicle. Luna, go, <laughs> please, both of you. But for that $27,920, you get the premium package, which adds navigation, paddle shifters, adaptive headlights that turn with the steering wheel, smart brake support, traffic sign recognition, which throws up a little stop sign on the uh, heads up display to let you know that a stop sign is coming up. Radar guided cruise control, auto dim rear view mirror, heated steering wheel, high beam, auto high beam control, and lane departure warning system, and lane keep assist. That is a lot of kit for any car under $30,000. Mazda is a car that's fun to drive. It gets, this Mazda 3 gets 27 miles per gallon city, 36 miles per gallon highway. I average right at 31 between the, the city and highway cycle. The biggest thing that makes the Mazda so good is that every car in its class wants to be more like the Mazda 3. Every car wants and needs to be sporty these days because the newer generations of people buying cars are looking for something more sporty, more lively. The Honda Civic wasn't always that sporty. The Mazda 3, sporty throughout every generation. The Volkswagen Jetta, not always sporty. The reason why I love Mazda so much is because they never change. They have evolved, they have adapted, but they never actually change the core promise of what they are, and that is a sporty car that's available to the masses. Now, for everything that is fantastic about the Mazda 3, there are a few things that aren't so great. So the car is not necessarily a speed demon, but it does have a two and a half liter, four cylinder Skyactiv-G motor, G standing for gasoline, with 184 horsepower and 185 pound-feet of torque. It's a lively motor, and more so the car carries speed through corners, and it is a nice cruising car. In a straight line, you would struggle to go faster than seven seconds to 60. Around town, it has pep. On the highway, it's quick enough. The six-speed automatic downshifts well and gets you up to speed just equally as well. Uh, it's not going to win any awards. It's not a dual clutch, but it does rev match downshifts, uh, especially in sport mode. And it does actually do a pretty good job of shifting up and down when you pull on the paddles. With that, some people would complain that the Mazda 3 is firm, but it really isn't. It's actually more of just a sporty suspension system. It's just it lets you know what the road is doing underneath of you. And most people aren't used to that these days, which is kind of a shame because people want sportier cars, but they want cars that literally give them no feedback or understanding of what's really happening. You turn the steering wheel and it's just like, nothing special about it. The Mazda 3 is actually special. It is a very good car to drive. It's a lot of fun. But again, moving on to the not so perfect things, the back seat space is not the greatest. If you have more than one kid, it's not going to be the best. And if that kid is old enough to kick the back of your seat, again, it's not going to be the greatest. The Mazda 3 is roomy for certain circumstances, not for all. Uh, I'm about five, nine and a half, and I'm comfortable back there. I'm fine back there, but anybody taller or bigger than me is not going to have the greatest time. And when you think about a car seat, I'm not sure that it would be the best in its class. For a small family like me and my wife, we just got married recently and we have a dog and a cat. So we don't have kids. Mazda 3, five door, perfect for us. Also the brakes. While the acceleration is not the quickest, the brakes also aren't the best. The brakes do stop you completely fine. They're not bad. It's just the brake pedal itself leaves a little bit to be desired as far as I'm concerned. 
when you need to scrub speed, especially for the fact that the Mazda 3 can actually carry quite a bit of speed through corners, coming out of them you would like a little bit better brake feel. But again, it does stop you well, it just doesn't give you the same emotion as some cars might when you're stopping. But one thing about that car that is very good, especially for the fact that it's a hatchback, is that you don't need a crossover if you have a Mazda 3 hatchback. All crossovers are cars. They're just cars with a lift and maybe a little bit uh, wider, a little bit longer. Recently, I took my mom uh, to go get some dog food. Now, my mom has two uh, German Shepherd sisters that are 80 and 90 pounds each, uh, and I have a half Siberian Husky, half Jack Russell Terrier, who is about 45 pounds, which is interesting. I call it the non-consensual dog because there was no way it was consensual between those two dogs. Hopefully, the Jack Russell was the male and not the female. We feed our dogs raw food. We go to a place uh, about once or twice a month to pick up you know, anywhere between 12 and 20, maybe 24 boxes of food. Each box carries 24 patties of food. So you need a big vehicle, or so you would think. I took the Mazda 3 hatchback with my mom to go get these patties, and she was shocked because she thought, there's no way all 20 of these boxes will fit in this tiny little car. I put the back seats down, and all 20 of the boxes fit with plenty of room to spare for another eight or 10 boxes. She has a Cadillac Escalade ESV. And she loves it because it has power and room and everything. But in the end, the Mazda 3 five door was just as good. The car is as usable as any crossover. Uh, and in bad weather, it'll be just fine. Most people that need crossovers or say that they need crossovers don't actually. Uh, the reason why they tell you is that, oh, I have a kid and, you know, I want to be able to carry stuff around. I need room for groceries or blah, blah, blah. They're just saying that because that's what they've been conditioned to believe. And that's what I find most annoying about them. So when I drive a car like the Mazda 3 hatchback, I realize that I would never need a truck or an SUV in 99.9% .9 of my life. So we have two, we have a dog and a cat. We have two pets. That's it. Uh, we're not going to have kids for a while, hopefully. The Mazda 3 has always been a good car, a positive experience for people owning it. Even that person who claims that it is a piece of shit after 170 to 175,000 miles. The car has given you pretty worry-free life over almost 200,000 miles. It's a risk to not buy a Honda or a Toyota, but in reality, Mazda in many ways is just as good. If you buy a Mazda, I seriously doubt you'll be disappointed. If you don't live in really, really hard hit places with snow and ice, I think you'll be fine. And you'll be surprised at how much you don't really need a large vehicle. And a Mazda 3 is perfect for you. So run right out, test drive a Mazda 3, uh, leave a comment saying I'm right because I know that I am. And let me know if you like this format. Hit subscribe, hit the like button. If you didn't like it, let me know by hitting that dislike button twice. And uh, yeah, Raw Autos on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Thank you for watching and stay tuned.